hey everyone, this is probably going to be the most pathetic end of year book tag <laughs> that you've ever seen, just in terms of not having read a lot recently and limited <laughs> end of year reading goals. What am I doing? I'm basically trying to force myself out of a reading slump because of pregnancy. Yes, will pregnancy be brought up in every single video? Hey, this is my lifestyle channel and this is my life. <laughs> right, let's just crack on with the question, shall we? And we'll see how terribly we're doing this year in terms of reading, although not my fault. Are there any books that you started this year that you need to finish? So I'm currently reading three books. This one you'll have seen before because I think I've been reading it for about six months now and uh, I'm still 40 pages in because um, I haven't touched it since I mentioned it but it is Revolting Prostitutes The Fight for Sex Workers Rights by Molly Smith and Juno Mack. I'm actually going to take this home with me because it's just been sitting in the studio and um, since going through the awful first trimester I like barely came in here like once a week max. So I'm going to take this home with me. <laughs> the next book that I'm currently reading is a fiction book and it is this is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. And this is another one that I either started right at the beginning of pregnancy or just before. So I've kind of been reading this for two months now and I am 130 pages in and I'm loving it so far. Um, it's just not quite got that like page turner like aspect to it that would keep me going. Like it's one that I can just like put down for ages and then pick up. But essentially it's about this family and um, they have got five children and their youngest kid is trans. But where I'm currently at in the story, the way that they see it is their, their youngest son, not a son, but that comes later, wants to go to school as a girl, dresses in more like feminine clothes and like the kid's only five. And so they're trying to navigate like making the kid happy, making the kids safe uh, and also just kind of being like is this gender dysphoria that they're experiencing like are they a trans kid or are they just a feminine boy we'll find out we'll find out and i'm like thoroughly enjoying it so far the way that the other children like talk as well is just so funny there was like this one scene where the two older brothers do an intervention with their parents because they're worried about them sending their younger sibling to school dressed as a girl because um, they think that they'll get bullied. I'm confused as to what pronouns to use because currently in the book they're using he him pronouns for the kid because that's kind of like their understanding but I'm sure like later in the book that it'll switch to she her. So the two older brothers are worried and one of them says he'll get beat up, no one will pick him for their team and gym, no one will sit with him at lunch or hang out with him at recess, Ben warned. Why can't he just play dress up at home? It's for his own protection. And these kids are like 10 or 11 I think. Plus it's so what said Ruzi when Ru trailed off. Gay. Well he's only five said Penn but if he's gay what's the problem with that? There's no problem if he's gay when he's older, said Ben. He just can't be gay right now. When he's older, he'll know what to do if someone teases him. Maybe he can learn kung fu or something, Rue added. But right now, he's just not equipped to be gay. That's why kids aren't gay when they're in kindergarten. I just love this, like, 11-year-old logic of, like, that's why kids aren't gay in kindergarten. Oh, bless. It's very sweet. I'm excited to continue reading it. And then the third book that I'm currently reading I'm listening to is an audiobook, which is Sally Rooney's new book, beautiful world where are you? This one I definitely started whilst in the throes of first trimester because I was just like I just need to lie down and like listen to something soothing and I was like I know what's soothing an Irish accent. <laughs> I'm enjoying it so far but it is one of those classic Sally Rooney just like very slow all about characters not really about plot but it is a great book to listen to. Like I'm very much enjoying just like having this story just like wash over me. So yes, those are my three books that I've started that I would like to finish. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? Uh, no. It's November now. No. <laughs> Is there a new release that you're still waiting for? I don't think so. There have been some new releases that I 
haven't gotten to reading yet. That's more because I'm not a fan of reading hardbacks, so I tend to wait until books come out in paperback. But one book that has just come out that I really want to read, although will I read it before the end of the year, is Consumed by Aja or Aja Barber. And that is about consumerism and the fashion industry. And then actually in December, is when Evian Whitney's book, The Sensual Self comes out. And I interviewed Evian uh, on my podcast, doing it all about sensuality and sexuality and developing a sensual practice. So that I definitely wanna get. And I think that comes out in December. What are three books that you want to read before the end of the year? Well, the three that I'm currently reading. And honestly, if that is all I read between now and the end of the year, you did it, Hannah. Like, yes, yes, yes. But as a stretch goal, if I miraculously finish <laughs> these three books and I want to move on to something else, I've decided that I want to read the kind of books that are the books that you read to get out of a reading slump. Like the really like funny, witty, fast paced, just you devour it, plot heavy, I think, kinds of books. And for me, that's rom-coms. <laughs> So I've yet to read the third Brown Sisters book, Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. So that is on my list. And then also there's the new Casey McQuiston book, One Last Stop, which I think will also fit the bill of like a pacey read to kind of like get me back into reading. And then maybe if I can tackle a heavy nonfiction book consumed as well. <laughs> Is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Now, I'm gonna have to like go back and look at what other books I've read this year because my mind is just pulling a complete blank. So I'm not entirely sure what future reads would be competing against at this point, but maybe one last stop could be up there. And in terms of like a non-fiction choice, maybe Revolting Prostitutes or Consumed could be up there, who knows. Have you already started making reading plans for next year? Short answer, no, <laughs> no. Long answer is I would love to make a dent in this. Like you may have seen the sex and relationships book haul that I did when I moved into this space to basically fill out these shelves. But have I touched any of them? I'm a bad sex educator. I just, I just haven't had the time to actually like refill the well. I just keep like trying to give and give the information and the content but I need to, I need to refill the well. I actually went and had a look at my reading priorities for 2021 and like the books that I said that I wanted to read. Four slash five of them that were on this list I have physically. So this was actually on that list. And then there was Hell for Every Size, which you may remember was like on my like end of year book tag for 2020 of like, yeah, I wanna read that. Haven't touched it. A Billion Wicked Thoughts. All About Love by Bell Hooks and uh, Pleasure Activism. So these are just some of the books, like these were the ones that I kind of point out at the beginning of the year that I was like, I would like to read those. But since then I've acquired so many more books that are also high on my priority list. And then there are even ones that I don't have copies of yet, but are really high on my <laughs> list as well, which is The Right to Sex, The Tragedy of Heterosexuality, Fern Rydell's new book and Kate Lister's new book. Fern Rydell's is Sex Lessons from History and I can't remember what Kate Lister's one is, but I think it's something around like the history of sex work. So yes. <laughs> I've really prioritised fiction this year, just in terms of like what has brought me joy. But what I'm now realising like towards the end of the year is that I really haven't been nourishing the like sex curious side of me and the sex educator side of me in terms of like learning from all of these books um, and obtaining new information and ideas this way. So we'll see. <laughs> Honestly, everything is up in the air. I have no idea like what I can and can't do anymore. I'm trying to see on this bookshelf what books I really want to read. So I'm just going across. The State of Affairs by Esther Perel, yep. Feminism Interrupted, uh, The Psychology of Sex, Sex and Social Media, Buzz, History of Sex Toys, Untamed, Trans Britain, Boys and Sex, K 
Can everyone please calm down? The art of receiving and giving, why women have better sex under socialism, um, her body and other parties. Oh my God, and I also really wanna read Sean Fay's book, The Transgender Issue. That's on the list as well, Jesus Christ. Ultimate Guide to Sex and Disability. What else is on here? Sex and World Peace. Period Power. Uh, the Middle Ages, A Graphic History. Oh my God. Sexuality, A Graphic Guide. In the Dream House. Sex Ed. Three Women. The Ethical Slut. Yes. The Spectrum of Sex. Gender Euphoria. Mating in Captivity. Magnificent Sex. How many books did I just read off just then? That would take me like a, an, a whole year to read in a good year. I'm not gonna do the Ali Abdul trick of listening to everything in audiobooks at 3x speed. I will not be taking that advice, Ali, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks for watching. This has been my maybe slightly chaotic end of year book tag. What are your reading plans for the end of the year? Although please, for the love of God, do not recommend me any books. I'll only allow you to recommend me any books if it's one that I have mentioned that is a book that I want to read and you wanna say, yes, prioritize that. That's all I'll accept. But feel free to share what you're reading in the comments because that's always fun. Oh my goodness. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.